Hey y'all and welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. My name is Kay and on this video I am going to share how I have been knitting my Share a Pair Sock Sets by Mandy's Makings. So I'll go through a couple of different things in this intro. I will have timestamps below this video if you want to skip ahead to a certain portion. You can just look right down below the video in the description box to see the time that you would need to skip ahead to. Say if you just want to see the heel or whatever that may be. You can look down there for the times. But first I will share with you a little bit about the Share a Pair sock sets if you are not familiar with those. So I have half of a Share a Pair sock set here and these are by Mandy's Makings. I will have her shop linked down below. So here's the one that I have. And this is half of a share a pair set. So the share a pair sock set is an idea that Amanda of Mandy's Makings came up with to knit along with a friend or crochet along. You could do whatever you wish. And the way these work, when you purchase a share a pair sock set, you get this plus another set just like this. So you get two sets and then you can keep one, you can gift one to a friend, and y'all can work on a project along together. So what comes in a share a pair sock set? Two sets like this, and each one has two 50 gram skeins. So these are each approximately 200 yards, 50 grams. This particular colorway is afternoon tea, and they are on her 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon base. And this is the fingering weight that I have. I know she has had some DK weights, I believe. Fingering is my jam because I like fingering weight socks. So this is on the fingering weight base and I'll show you a pair of socks that I did last month. This is, um, today that I'm recording this, it's March 2nd and this is gonna be our March share a pair set that Amanda and I are knitting along together. Last month we did the Mardi Gras beads set. And here's these socks. And as you can see, I'm striping these. So that's particularly what this tutorial is going to be about. Sharing how I am knitting up these socks, how I am striping them, doing the contrast, um, cuff, heel, toe, all of those things as we go throughout. And I want to make sure I say, this is not a how to knit socks tutorial. If you need a how to knit socks tutorial, I will link my tutorial playlist here. And I have how to knit socks on a variety of different needles and methods. So you can head over and check those out if you're just beginning and you want to learn how to knit a sock. This is going to go over mainly how I'm striping. But I will walk you through how when I get to time to do the heel flap, how I'm doing that without having to cut any yarn, um, et cetera, as we go down the foot. I am going to knit these socks for this tutorial on nine inch circulars. You can of course use whatever method you want. The way that you do the stripes is gonna be the exact same. In all honesty, <laughs> the reason I'm doing this on nine inch circulars is because I have no other sock needles free. That's not even a joke. An exaggeration. I got nothing. <laughs> I do have some DPNs. I take that back. I have some DPNs free. Um, but for this tutorial, I wanted to keep it super simple. Um, wanted to do magic loop or nine inch and I have no magic loop needles free. So we're going to go with nine inch. I've really been loving these lately, by the way, and I will link the needles that I'm using down below if you're interested in checking those out. So let's go ahead, I'm going to get this caked up and cast on and knit my cuff. Then I will join you for the tutorial portion. So for the cuff, what I've been doing with these share a pair is I cast on 64 stitches, that's the size that works the best for me. And then I've been doing knit two, purl two for the ribbing. You could of course do another knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, twisted rib, whatever you feel like doing, whatever you like the best. Um, knit two purl two is what I'm going to do, 64 stitches for my size, and I like a 20 round cuff. So I'm going to knit that up, and then I will meet you back here when it is time to start striping in the collar. As you can see with these socks, I did the speckled for heels, toes, and cuff on this, black for heels, toes, and cuff on this. I just wanted to make sure I got the most out of the yarn that I could. 
Um, and I think it's fun to have opposites for heels, toes, and cuffs on these. So I'm going to just start with the blue is the cuff. And then I'm going to stripe in that. You can do whatever you want. And if you don't have a share pair, grab two 50 gram leftovers and join me in knitting up some striped socks or some scraps, whatever you have on hand. And let's knit up some striped socks. And I'll meet you back here when we have our cuff knit. So I have my cuff done, but before we get started, I thought I would just show you here really quickly. This is the side where I have carried my yarns. I want to show you what it looks like on the outside and the inside of the sock. So I think you can just a little bit tell that that's where the yarns were carried, but it's not a huge not noticeable difference. And on the inside of your sock, this is what that is going to look like. You will have that down the inside of your sock, but again, not a big deal. I'm going to show you how I avoid having this side like pull in a lot because when you're carrying these yarns it can tend to pull in if you're not super careful about your tension so we're going to go over that but we're going to be striping these just the same way i did here so we're going to be going two rounds in one collar and then two rounds in the next collar so here's my finished cuff 20 rounds of knit two purl two ribbing and now we are ready to stripe in this second collar. So I just grab the second yarn, make sure you've got enough of a tail there. You want to just go in like we're going to knit, place this yarn on the needle and pull it through. Then we're just going to knit across, making sure we're working with our working yarn and not with our tail. I've done that many a times. And we're just going to knit two rounds in this collar. And we are not cutting the old collar. I should mention that. See, it's still attached here on the inside. We are not cutting that. So go ahead and knit your two rounds. And then we'll start working on how do we do these stripes without cutting our yarn. And I should say, while we are knitting away here, I am comfortable doing this technique with two rounds per stripe. One round per stripe would be great. Three rounds I think is doable, but you have to be even carefuler, even more careful. <laughs> But you do have to be even more careful if you're doing three rounds. I don't think I would do more than three with this method. Again, you could. It just can get a little tricky. You do have more of a chance of having that side pull in a lot if you are doing longer gaps between where you're alternating and changing colors. So I think two rounds is good. It gives you a nice distinct stripe. And then it doesn't make it too hard to keep your tense tension in check. So go ahead and finish knitting your two rounds or your round, and then we will start striping. Okay, I've knit, ooh, there we go, losing stitch markers. I've knit two rounds of that new collar that we added in. And now we are ready to bring the blue from the cuff up and do two rounds in it. I left this just like it is here so that you can see. It can seem a little loosey-goosey right in here. So this stitch over here seems loose. That was the first stitch with our new collar. So we can just come back here and grab this tail and pull that and it tightens it up. As you continue to knit, that may loosen back up again. Not a big deal. When you go to weave in this end, and I'll show you at the end of the tutorial how you wanna make sure you pull that tight again. So I'm just gonna tuck that one down inside of there. The blue, we do need to bring up because we are going to knit a stitch with it. So I like to go ahead and just put my needle in like I'm ready to knit that stitch. And I can see a little loose here. Drop 
that yarn and pick up my blue and get ready to go. Then this one's not too loose right here. This is the stitch that you want to look at. Right there. You wanna see if it looks like it's too loose. This first one, it's kind of hard to tell. Once we get going, you can tell a bit better, but you just wanna make sure it's not super, super loose. This stitch right there. You also don't wanna yank it to where it's like non-existent. <laughs> That's not good. That's when you're gonna have the puckering. So I'm gonna bring that back down here and loosen that up a bit. So there you can tell I've loosened it up a lot. We don't really want that. I'm gonna pull it back just a little tighter so that it looks very similar to the stitch next to it. I'm going to knit two rounds with the blue and meet you back here. And I'm gonna show you this striping a couple of times so that you can kind of get an idea of what you're looking for, what you wanna keep an eye out for when it's time to alternate those colors. So I'll meet you back here in two rounds. Okay, I have knit two rounds in the blue. Slip my marker over and let's take a look here. So you can see that stitch that I told you would probably loosen up again. <laughs> it's definitely loosened up again. And this stitch right here was the last stitch we did in the lighter colored of the yarns. So now we are going to drop our blue yarn. I kind of like to drop it over on the left and then pick up on the right the new yarn. And we can see here it is definitely loose, so we want to tighten it up. I'm just barely pulling that so that it looks pretty similar to the stitch next to it. And then we also want to be mindful when we knit this first stitch that we are not pulling it too tight. You can kind of knit that stitch and then adjust this way by pulling just a little bit and that's gonna help even it out. I do also think it's just practice over time. I remember the first time I ever tried this, I definitely had a lot of puckering and it was just kind of a total mess. <laughs> but you can see here, they're all looking pretty similar in size. That's the main thing is that you want them to be similar in size to the ones next to them. That's how you're gonna keep an even tension and then make sure you're not pulling that first stitch when you pull the yarn up to knit with it. You don't pull it too tight because that's really gonna cause it to pull in right there. So like I said, I wanna show you this a couple more times. I do have to knit these couple of rounds to get back to where I can show you. So I'll just keep doing that a few more times so you can kind of see what it begins to look like. All right, two more rounds done back to where we're gonna pull up the blue again. Slip my marker. And the way that I'm doing this on nine inch circulars, as far as pulling everything up, all of this, it's gonna be the same for any method that you are using to knit in the round. This is how you'll do the collar change at the beginning of your round. So I'm gonna drop that collar, pick the blue back up, and then just take a peek see what we're dealing with here. So I'm gonna pull it just a smidge. That's the stitch right there. We want it to look like the one right next to it. Pretty similar in size. And this does become more automatic as you, you do this more. You can just kind of look and see, okay, a little loose, a little tight, and just adjust accordingly. Gonna knit the first stitch, remembering not to pull this tight. Don't pull it tight. Keep it pretty even tension there. Even barring on a little loose maybe, not super loose, but you don't want that first stitch to be tight. All that's gonna do is pull this stitch down here that we just made sure was the same size as the one next to it. It's just gonna pull that stitch tight and in turn pull this whole section right here in. I think I'll show you guys one more time. I'm gonna knit these two rounds. Show you one more time and then I will turn you loose on the leg and then we will come back to chat about 
the heel and how I do the color change for the heel without change without cutting my yarn. So let's knit these two rounds and show you the stripe one more time. Okay, two more rounds of the blue done. I'm gonna slip my marker over, drop the blue, pick up the other color. And I can see here it's a little loose, so I just wanna pull it a little bit tighter to where it looks pretty similar to the one next to it. And start knitting. Remembering not to pull that stitch tight that first stitch that I did there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn you loose for the leg. I am going to do my heel in this blue. I want to make sure that the last two rounds that I do on the leg are in the light speckled color because I'm going to do my heel in the blue. And here's how I did it on these. On this one I did cuff, heel, and toe in the speckled. So my last two rounds on my leg were this dark black. Then I started the heel on a stripe of the speckled. So go ahead and whatever color you are not doing your heel with, complete your leg whatever length you want. I did 50 rounds for this leg and then I started my heel. So go ahead and do however many rounds you're going to do for your leg, remembering to do end it with the last color being the one that is not going to be your heel. And I will meet you back here when I'm at that point and talk to you about how I do the heel turn or heel flap and heel turn without having to cut any of my yarns. We will walk through that section together. I finished my leg 50 rounds alternating every two stripes. Show you on the side here how that is looking. You can see you, you have to look pretty close to be able to tell that I've even alternated there. It's all just about making sure your tension is even and that that last stitch, when you pull that yarn up, that last stitch is not too loose and not too tight. You wanna try to make it as even as it can be. To the one next to it. So we are now ready to start the heel. For this one I'm doing the heel in the blue. Cuffs, heels, or cuff heel and toe on this sock will be in the blue. So to do that, I'm gonna knit that last stitch on that round there, slide my marker. I'm gonna knit, since I'm doing this on nine inch circulars, I need to knit across here and place a marker, but I'm you're going to knit across the front of your sock with the blue. So we're going to make sure again that we're checking the tension on that last stitch to make sure it looks pretty even to its neighbor there. And we're going to knit across the first half of the stitches, the front of the sock. So for the size that I'm doing, I'm going to be knitting across 32 stitches. Now I'm going to grab a marker. I'm just doing this because I'm doing nine inch circular. So I want to make sure I can easily see where my heel is on here. If you're doing magic loop or anything, you don't have to worry about that. And if you need more information on that, you can watch the nine inch circular, um, how to knit socks on nine inch circulars. So we knit across the first half of the stitches in the blue. Now we are ready to do our heel um, flap with this blue. Since our last round here on the back of the sock was in the speckled, when we're go doing our first row of this heel flap, we do not want to immediately jump in with the slip one, knit one. If we do that, we are going to be slipping this collar up into our heel flap. It's not a huge deal if you do that. I just prefer a nice clean line there when it comes to switching to a different color for my heel flap. So I'm just going to knit across this first row of the heel flap, instead of doing the slip one, knit one across. You can see that gives us a nice clean line there. If we were to slip and knit like the heel flap will usually call for, unless you're changing colors, then you can see we're pulling that, that white speckled yarn up into there. And I just don't want that. So we're going to knit across. 
it'll just give you a nice clean crisp change color there And doing that is not gonna change anything. We are still gonna do the same amount of rows. So for the size that I'm doing, I'm gonna be doing 32 rows on my heel flap. So now I'm ready to just turn my work so that I'm working on the wrong side. And I'm gonna do the second row the same as I normally would. Um, so you're just changing that first row to give yourself a nice crisp color there leaving everything else the same. So go ahead and knit your heel flap and your heel turn. Again, this is not a how to knit socks tutorial. So if you need help with that, I will have the sock tutorials that I have here on my YouTube listed with links down below this video and you can find those there. But go ahead and knit your heel flap and your heel turn in the blue. And then we will come back and I will show you how you do not need to cut any collars, how we're just gonna jump right back in with our stripes and keep going. So I finished my heel flap and my heel turn. So now I am ready to pick up my gusset stitches. And since we are doing two rows, two rounds, excuse me, per stripe, I've knit one round already across the front with the blue, did the heel flap and heel turn with the blue. Now I'm going to pick up the gusset stitches with this blue as well. I'm gonna place a marker here. I like to, this is how I mark my beginning of round for my gusset decrease section. But we're just gonna go across. We're going to get to the side here and I will show you. Using this blue, we are gonna pick up gusset stitches along here, knit across the front of our sock, pick up the gusset stitches along this side and then knit all the way back to over here to where this yarn is. Don't worry about the fact that you may be thinking, okay, I'm going to pick up all these gussets. This is now my beginning of round. So why am I still knitting? Should my color change right here in the center of my heel? Because technically this is my beginning of round when it comes to my decreases for when I do my gusset section. If you followed any of my tutorials, um, you will know that. So that is why I placed that marker here. But when it comes to changing colors, we're still gonna change our color over here on the side of our sock. That is not going to change. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna pick up all of these gusset stitches, and then I'm gonna knit all the way back around here, and I will meet you back here at this point. So again, you're gonna pick up gusset stitches on this side, knit across the front of your sock, pick up gusset stitches on the other side, knit back across and back down to this point on the side. So I will meet you back here as soon as we have that done. So I have picked up the gusset stitches, knit along the front, picked up these gusset stitches, and now I've knit back to the side of my sock. So this will still be my beginning of round when it comes to doing my gusset decreases. I'll know that I need to do a gusset decrease over on um, this side and a gusset decrease over on this side. So that's still technically my beginning of round. Doesn't mess with that, but my collar change is going to stay on the side of my sock. This keeps me from having to cut any yarn and restart it back over here. And I'm still, I'm keeping with the two stripe or two rounds per stripe on the front of the sock. We have done our two rounds with the blue, so we are going to drop it, pick up the speckled, double check here, to check for any tension issues with that last stitch of the last speckled stripe we did, and then just start knitting with that. And we're just gonna continue this along the foot. You're just now gonna be doing two um, rounds in the speckled, then two in the blue. Keep with that and don't worry about this marker back here when it comes to changing the colors. The colors are still going to change um, on the side of the sock 
this is just the beginning of round for decreases and you can do your decreases and all of that. It's all personal preference, but I just want you guys not to be worried about this marker back here if you do it the method that I do. Your color change is still gonna be over here on the side and you're just gonna continue striping just how we have been doing, checking that tension every time on those stitches and adjusting it as needed. So I will come back and I'll show you guys the color change for the toe when we get to that point. So go ahead and just keep knitting along on your foot until you're ready to change back to the blue or whatever color it is that you're using um, to your contrast color that you're using for your cuff, heel, and toe. And I'll see you then. I am now ready to do the toe on my sock. I will not show you guys the process for the how to knit a toe um, because this is not a how to knit socks tutorial. I will have those linked below if you need that information. But I just wanna show you guys how these stripes work through the whole sock, how it looks at the end. And you can see here, you can tell that there is a spot where the stripes happened. That's completely normal when you're striping this way. And please remember that this is not the only way to stripe. I, I realize there are so many other ways. I'm not saying this is the way to do it, the best way, the correct way, nothing like that. This is just my preferred way and I wanted to share that with y'all. But for this way, there can be that slight ridge, but as soon as you wear it, or if you are someone who blocks your socks before you put them in rotation, that is going to disappear. You are not gonna see that any longer. Let's take a peek here at how those stripes look. And I am so pleased with that. Look at how nicely those, those work up. You can see on the inside, we do have that ridge going down. And with being ready for the toe, I do want to let y'all know that it doesn't matter when it comes to the toe if your last stripe is the color that you're going to do the toe with because I'm using the blue for heels, toes, and cuffs for this sock. It does not matter if that last stripe is that color or the color you striped in. It doesn't matter. So it ended up with this one when I measured that I needed to do two more rounds. So I went ahead and did two rounds in the blue and now I will jump in with the toe decreases with the blue. So I will just cut that other yarn and weave that end in when the sock is done and just continue on with that blue. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful for y'all for how you can, just one way that you can stripe two yarns together in a sock. I love doing it this way. I mean, who wants to, when you're striping, doing two rounds per stripe, who wants to have all those ends to weave in? So I think carrying the yarn up the inside is just a great option for how to make those stripes work. If you have any questions about this, my email address will be right down below this video. Feel free to email me. I will be happy to help in any way that I can. Thank you guys for watching. Happy knitting. Bye.